Hey, thanks for stopping by. Today, we're going to be talking about magwells or mag guides on the 1911 platform. If you're not familiar with guns, a magwell will help guide magazines into a firearm almost like a funnel. Like anything else, there's going to be cheap components and very expensive components. And right here, these are two examples of that. The Ed Brown magwell is on the stainless target 9mm. It works in tandem with the mainspring housing, and at 25 lines per inch, it provides a nice grip without biting into the skin. Overall, the size seems to be fairly standard. I like this magwell a lot. It pairs very nicely with the gun. I had it blended by Clark Custom Guns, and it turned out great. Functionally, though, I can't tell any difference compared to the drop-in magwell on the MC Operator. The biggest difference of these two magwells is how they secure to the gun. Now, the drop-in secures to the bottom bushing on the frame of the pistol, and one major drawback to this style is its probability of scratching the frame upon installation. The blending on the Ed Brown magwell is very nice. It's seamless, it looks good, I like how it contributes to some of the modifications I made on that gun. Functionally, they work exactly the same. Magazines go in, magazines come out. It's that simple. Now, if you're going to use a magwell, you need to have a base plate on your magazine in order to properly seat the magazine. This is a seven round GI style mag that I'm sure many of you have gotten with 1911s if you have one. Trying to seat this in a gun with a magwell, well, it's not going to work exactly the same. It's going to leave a bit of a gap. Now, if you want to run these seven round GI magazines, the solution is pretty simple. You just need to add the base pad to the bottom of the magazine. That way, when you go to seat it, it can fully insert into the gun. The largest drawback of the drop-in magwell is how it affects the grips of the 1911 platform. All grips must be modified to incorporate a drop-in magwell. As you can see here, a standard 1911 grip will not install on a gun with a drop-in mag guide. A cutout needs to be in place to fit around the fixture of the magazine well itself. I was able to modify certain grips for this purpose. I used a Dremel and just went slow, removing enough material to make it work. Modifying grips was the first thing I've ever done using a Dremel or modifying anything on a gun. So for that reason, anyone can do it. In summary, both of these magwells will work exactly the same. Do consider the drop-in magwell will scratch the frame and grips need to be modified to fit it. Again, the drop-in cost $20 and the two-piece Ed Brown cost $85, another $70 to get it blended and refinished. If I were to recommend one over the other, hands down, I say go with the magwell made by Wilson Combat, Smith & Alexander, Stan Chen, Ed Brown, or any other reputable 1911 parts maker. You can easily swap out different grips, and with a two-piece, you can remove the magwell with the turn of a screw. Thanks for watching, guys. If you want to see review videos of either 1911s shown here, click the cards up top, or you can find them in the descriptions below. If you liked the video, please leave a like, smash the dislike if you didn't, and as always, have fun, be safe, and shoot great.